Hello all and welcome to my let's play of Dark Seed 2. I'm going to change some of the settings a bit. I'm going to change some of the settings a bit and then I'm going to get started. Dark Seed 2, let's do this. Oh, load time's a lot better than the first game. <laughs> right, so we're going down a dark Rita, corridor here. Rita, where, are where are you? Rita! Well, where are you, Rita? Help oh, me, phew, Mike. there she is. Help me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that uh, <laughs> animation. Ah... Uh. Help me. So I, I wish I knew where this was in the game, because I'm pretty sure this is just some nameless corridor you never see again. <laughs> Fucking animation, I love it. Yeah, that's how I sound when I first wake up. It's the same dream, night after night. I'm searching for Rita in the dark world, but something unspeakable starts chasing me. It's like how the dark world just changed outside his time. window. It's been more than a year since I foiled the ancient's plans to grow an alien embryo in my brain, and <clears> still <throat> the dark world haunts me. Rita's murder is just the latest reminder that no place is safe from the darkness. He says that with absolutely zero enthusiasm. Not even my hometown. It's when the ancient's trying to plant an alien embryo in my head. Which I guess you should uh, note that this is no longer Mike Dawson. I don't know if you've seen any of the other videos I put out, but uh, this character is played by Chris Gilbert. He has a uh, different take on the character, I guess. Come in. The door's open. The door's already... Yeah, I'll say the door's already open. Why are they... <laughs> hey, your mother <laughs> let me in, Dawson. I had some no more questions sense. to ask you about the murder. Right, so the sh sheriff just comes into our room so we can have an interrogation. That's fine. Am I a suspect, Sheriff? Yeah, you're number one. And we have to look at everybody, Dawson. <laughs> Especially everyone who was close to Rita. It's interesting because he does start saying he's the number one suspect later on in the game. <laughs> Might as well just say it now. Alright, uh... Rita and yeah, I didn't we'll really see each other much since I moved back home. We weren't really dating it, that's Just what you're insinuating. how much contact did you have with her? <laughs> None at all. <laughs> Look, we only saw each other a few times. <laughs> I was in the bushes. I see. Were you having a relationship? <laughs> I asked her out a few times. <laughs> Yeah, I asked her out funny. a few times, but she was always too busy with the library and stuff. <laughs> Just always too busy with the library What sort and of stuff? stuff? <laughs> I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. Something about washing her hair. She always had excuses for not going out with me. <laughs> I'm washing my hair this Saturday and drying it the next. What kinds of excuses? She had some kind of reading group she always uh, went yeah. to. The famous reading group. And did you ever attend one of these reading group meetings? I can't read, Sheriff. No. I don't like being around other people these days. <laughs> so, you sure always don't trying like being to get alone either. with her. <laughs> well, I sort of wanted way. to have a relationship, but Rita didn't. <laughs> and that's Sur why you surprising can't. given she had a relationship with uh, everyone in the town but sheriff I didn't do anything I just can't remember what happened that night <laughs> yes that will hold up in court not a very good alibi is it <laughs> even the sheriff's calling him on his bullshit look sheriff I cared about Rita I want to find out who killed her as much as you do. So every time I pick something, it's like five more like responses or oh, questions come up. Just how out. much did you care for Rita? <laughs> I feel like we've already been through this. 
you <laughs> weren't go intimate, this if that's what you're getting at. <laughs> I see. I don't know what happens when a man loves a woman, Sheriff. Let's see. Didn't we go all over this before? So the other two, I think, to end the conversation. Yeah, I want to see everything we can. That was last week, and you left out a lot. The witnesses said you and Rita left the banquet together. What happened when you two were alone? We weren't intimate together, if that's what you were asking. <laughs> Look, I don't remember being alone with Rita that night. I don't remember anything. I must have gotten drunk. I don't know who I am. Is that so? People said they heard you two arguing outside the school building. I may have said something about the boogeyman, but that was way too embarrassing. I'm getting Sorry, a headache, a little foreshadowing Sheriff. for later. Can we put this off until later? <laughs> All right, Dawson, but stick around town. The feds will want to talk to you when they get here. <laughs> you think here. that would work in real life? Like, I know you're interrogating me, but I have a headache. Can we do this later? Feds? You mean the FBI? I think it's in the head. Well, that's right. I don't much like the idea of them trampling over my turf, but the mayor wants me to bring him in. My turf. Well, you're doing such a good job there, Sheriff. What's Mayor Fleming's interest in Rita's murder? Yeah, we'll he wants this later, case Mikey. solved quickly with the election coming up and all. It seems he has some friends at the bureau, and believe me, they won't go easy on you. Nothing says you won't get uh, won't get reelected like a murder. I wish I had something head. to tell you, Sheriff. I really do. But I just don't well, remember. Well, if you remember anything, see me down at the station. Like how he just he but like jerks his head had around like every so often. Today, it's like a heartbeat. Things won't bum, look bum, good for bum, you. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, he stopped. Oh no, he's dead. All right. Well, the sheriff left. Now well, let's look around the house. Let's turn on the TV. The TV's not even facing the bed. Here. All I'd get is snow. I guess, uh... I'm probably the last person on the block to have a black and white set. I guess he watches it from his desk. Good old black and white CRT TV. I used to love movies about swashbucklers. They made <laughs> me feel like I could be a hero. <laughs> what? It's so random. I used to love movies about swashbucklers. You already, already said that. What was this? I won this fencing trophy during high ah, school. Ah, yes, my fencing trophy. It's been a long time since I've done any fencing. It's been a long time since I've done much of anything. God, I suck. That's too valuable. It. I better leave it here. <laughs> I want to drop it somewhere, I guess. <laughs> Mom's fridge magnet? That's that's perfectly fine to take. Alright, let's check out these records. What does Mikey Boy listen to? My old turntable. You can't get records for it anymore since Compact Disc came out. I mean, that's probably not true. I the feel like there's still record stores. I was a senior. I never bothered to get it fixed. Never bothered to do much of anything. <laughs> the stereo stopped working okay. when I was yeah, a right, Mikey. All right, what's over here? I probably should have looked at that when he was over there. I've always kept my clothes in this chest instead of the closet. Okay. Nothing here fits me anymore. <laughs> he saw all his baby clothes in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, let's check out the closet then. This closet has been locked ever since I can remember. The key was lost a long time ago. <laughs> There's ways to fix this that, closet though. Has been locked ever since I've been afraid of this closet ever since I was a little kid. I used to have nightmares about monsters coming out of it at night. So Mikey's just always been crazy. <laughs> okay, is there anything else? We can look out the window, I guess. Strange. It's a sunny day, but it still feels gloomy. <laughs> That's just because you're depressed. Strange. Anyway. Can't look at the bear's flag. Or the cougars? Is that what that says? Or just cougs? I can't tell. All right, let's go visit it Mom. smells good in here. Mom must be cooking something special. <laughs> sure steaming something up. Just wave your hand over the steam, you know, that's all you need. You, know, you can't interact with chicken. Or a rooster. This picture has been on the refrigerator for years. I'm not about to take it down now. <laughs> you monster. Mom always loved this drawing I made as a kid. Too bad she doesn't care as much about my writing. <laughs> or me. Mom's had this pukey avocado green refrigerator Puky. since the 70s. I'm not Let's hungry now. Maybe I'll catch a bite in town later. 
Spoiler alert, we never catch a bite. Alright, there's the magnet. Let's look at that smiley face magnet. I don't know why Mom likes these annoying smiley face magnets. God, Mom. So annoying. Right, I'm just gonna take that. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I look at one of these smiley face magnets, doesn't even I look like what, what it looked like on the uh, <laughs> on the fridge. I don't know, Mom viewer. What do you think it's smiling at? <laughs> <laughs> what? Right, let's talk to mom. Morning, Morning mom. mom. So it takes the sheriff to wake you up, Mike. <laughs> if so, I'll call him every day. I don't feel like talking about the sheriff, Mom. God, Mom. Fine. You never feel like he really talking. He sounds like a whiny teenager when he talks to her. It's weird. You know, you woke me up with all those pots banging. <laughs> well, I've got to make my Sorry, steam. Sorry, Mike, but it's time that you got up. The sun has been shining for hours. But it's so gloomy outside. Gosh, Mom, you, you treat me like I'm in high school again. Mom. Well, then start acting your age. You came <laughs> home to recover from your nervous breakdown, which is fine, but you've been here for a year now. When are you going back to your job? <laughs> How long does it take you to get over a nervous breakdown? <laughs> Jesus. This woman's terrible. But I have an extended sick leave for as long as I need it. That sounds like an awesome job, actually. Well, I think you've recovered from whatever it was. I don't know what <laughs> happened to you in all. that old house in California, but surely it couldn't have been that bad. Might not have happened at all. Link in the description. Go easy on me. <laughs> what I went through last year was far worse than anything you could imagine. Anything. I've lost a husband and a sister to cancer. <laughs> Your father left me no insurance comes the guilt money, trip. and I have arthritis. You don't see me checking into a mental hospital with a nervous <laughs> breakdown. Oh my god, mom. <laughs> oh my god. You're ashamed of me, aren't you? <laughs> yes. No, son, I'm not ashamed of you. I just and wish I, have I knew arthritis. what was bothering you. Jesus. You were always forgot about full that of line. energy and life. Since that nervous uh, it has breakdown, the, uh, all you do is stare at the wall. Uh, vibes from the room. <laughs> the mother's like, I definitely have breast cancer. <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting uh. motivated. You know, Mike, you're late for your doctor appointment. You're never going to snap out of your depression unless you see the doctor. And after that, I'd like you to do some errands for me. Because <laughs> nothing snaps you out of depression like running errands for mom. <laughs> I've got things I've got to do. things to do today, mom. Mom. Like what? You don't do a damn thing around here anymore. <laughs> damn, Mom's telling it like it is. I'm starting to get a headache. Like you always say that. Well, that's what your medicine is for. You know where to find it. I guess that's like By the, the way, uh, Mom, harvester equivalent of saying bye is just saying, I have a headache. I love you, Mike. Time to guilt I mom just again. Want you to get well again. <laughs> or time to guilt mom this time. <laughs> All right, let's talk to mom again. Hi, mom. <laughs> Leave, please. I thought you were going out, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little too early. <laughs> She's gonna say that. I've got some time to kill before I need to see Doctor Sims, and I'm feeling a little anxious. Do you want do you want to retry that, Chris? Or no? Why We're don't good? you watch okay. some television? That usually helps to relax you. Ah, that's a hint to watch the TV. In case you don't know what to do. <laughs> Just leave. Why is Mike's room when I was like, a kid, connected my to the kitchen? Used to gather here to watch television. Where's mom's room? The couch is way too far. What is that painting? Oh I've my fallen God. asleep on this old sofa many times watching the late show. How do you even see the TV from there? I guess we'll go in the bathroom. This bathroom always smells of mom's perfume. And it's blue. If it was green, they would die. Okay, let's take a shower. Mom does a good job of keeping this bathtub clean. Mm, good job, mom. I think I'll skip a shower today. Ugh, so gross. Bathing seems like such an effort lately. It's interesting they make that a mechanic in the first game, but not in this one. 
Mom does a good job of keeping this bathtub clean. All right. Let's go look at the medicine cabinet. Mom insists that I keep the pills Dr. Sims prescribed for me Wait, in the medicine cabinet. Is that is that correct? Be proscribed? She's been counting the pills to make sure up. I'm taking my medicine. I don't think that's a uh, that's an accurate statement there. Accurate word. I'll bet these pills are just placebos Dr. Sims prescribed so that I think he's doing some good. No, it's that it proscribe is a word. Interesting. But it is not prescribed. No sense in flushing the toilet unless to I have to. prohibit, forbid. The thing always backs up. To denounce or condemn or banish an outlaw. Mom hates it when I leave the toilet seat up, but it's my little way of rebelling against the system. <laughs> Mike is such a douchebag in this. Like, what system? It's just be respectful to your mother. I don't remember if I pointed that out in my uh, my deep I'm dive of. Uh, Dark seed that he likes to rebel against his mother. My father, rest his soul, sat here every night watching television. I miss him. Oh, poor Mike. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Let's check out the door. Mom likes the stained glass in the door, but it worries me that a stranger might be able to see inside. Can, can well, if you can't see out, how can the stranger see in? I really want him to say something about that painting. Mom keeps all sorts of odds and ends in this cabinet. Okay. Let's find These out what's in the cabinet. These were taken when I was in high school. My father was alive then. Those were happier <laughs> times. Okay. So maybe maybe it's the father's death that like. These photos were taken when I was uh, in Made him made him go a little crazy. Okay, let's let's go in here. So this is where I left my camera. It's not an oh, odds and end at all. My old 35mm camera. There's only one shot left on this roll. <laughs> Better make it count. Alright, uh, let's look we at the We bought this color TV in the early 70s. The picture tube isn't the greatest. Good smack on the side clears it up, though. Alright, come on. There you go. <laughs> it took me a second there. On giving hot lunches to the school children. In other parts of the country, law enforcement officials are still bewildered. I mean, is that the animation we're going for here, Tarks? We scanned them last week after the high school reunion. When asked about potential suspects, Sheriff Willard Butler replied, "Michael, you and your kind are in grave danger once again. The ancients have returned. I am sending something to assist you. You must act quickly." Breaking update. Warn that this is the second local death this year, and residents should always be alert. On the national news Mikey scene... Boy's killing everyone. I'm just kidding, Mikey didn't kill that uh, the other one. Door. I don't think, anyway. So yeah, like I mentioned in the deep dive, every time someone starts mentioning Rita, he starts either getting a There's headache or... The front door. Okay, we hear you, jeez. There's someone at the... <laughs> nice, you can keep making him ring it. It's a ticket for <laughs> Just slam the door in his face. In the park. <laughs> God damn it, Mike. Uh, anyway, like I was, uh, this saying, ticket will admit me to the traveling carnival um, in the park. Every time someone mentions Rita, he either gets a headache or just like dissociates from reality. Just like it happened on the TV there. All right, let's see if mom has anything new to say now that we saw some weird shit on the TV. Morning, mom. Morning, mom. I thought you were going out, Mike. Yeah, I left the kitchen and my room. <laughs> you would not believe the day I've been having. I think I have to go with my, my life, life as a living, a living hell. hell. <laughs> oh, Mike, I can't talk to you anymore. You're just too depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to waving my hand now. All right, so now we can leave. And I think we get our first interaction with Jack. Yeah. Jack with his very cool motorcycle. Hey, that's Jack. You can hear it come up, he likes but to you think he's tough can't really see it, and all. But he's about the only new friend I've made since I returned home. Maybe that's why you never see it. Well, I guess you see it at the end. Well, are you just going to stand there gaping so you, at me, Mikey? <laughs> or are you going to take a load off exist. your feet? So if you'd notice, take a look at the uh, the flower pots there. 
Because they called it a what flower brings garden you here, or whatever Jack? in my deep dive video. They're fresh and in bloom. My motorcycle, dumb cough. You need to have your ears checked. Actually, Excuse I stopped me? by because I saw the sheriff's patrol car drive off. I was worried about my favorite recovering mental case. <laughs> At least Jack tells it like it is. <laughs> Don't, Don't joke, joke about, about me, stab him. Down, Jack. I thought you were my friend. Relax, Michael boy, relax. Michael Jeez, boy. you must be under a lot of stress. It's they Michael say boy. your sense of humor is the first thing to go. I mean, what did you think would happen? Of course you're the number one suspect. The sheriff oh, thinks sorry, I, I murdered Rita. Yeah, I know. I overheard Deputy Brown talking in the diner. You're the number one suspect. Nice. You overheard the deputy? <laughs> That's great. Everyone must know by now. <laughs> deputy Chad. It's Chatty, a small town, people talk. But that could work to our advantage. I have a plan. We murder everyone. <laughs> I'm too hungry to think. What right should now. I do? Not to worry, Mikey boy. Oh, now it's I've Mikey been giving boy. your That's situation weird. some thought, and I think there are some things Sheriff Butler overlooked. <laughs> like the fact he didn't arrest us. I'm too hungry to think right now, Jack. How about joining me at the diner? So we're not going to listen to him? Still I don't up? think I'm very welcome there. Not after that stunt I pulled with the jukebox. <laughs> Let's meet here after you've done stuffing your face. <laughs> hey, smashes the jukebox. I've got an appointment with Dr. Sims soon. Let's get together afterwards. You're seeing that quack? I love the Jack theme. Don't waste your time with that head shrinker. Listen to your old pal Jack instead. Okay, we'll meet here after you're done with Dr. Sigmund Fraud. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's what are these options? I feel like the biggest patsy since Oswald. Don't worry, we'll get you out of this mess. Then we can party. Party. <laughs> we'll murder the next town. You know, Jack, I still can't remember what happened that night. You know, that, that excuse isn't happened. gonna work. You know that, and I know like, that. At all. It's a terrible excuse. I don't remember what happened. I don't Thanks, think Jack. I murdered her. <laughs> Thanks for believing me. <laughs> so now, that's what Jack's there for, just believing me. in Mike. I'll meet you right here after your doctor's appointment. Until then, <laughs> hang, hang loose. loose. Quite the 90s term. What, you don't remember saying that? Every uh, balding middle aged uh, man on a motorcycle said it. I've got also wearing a leather jacket. Alright, so Jack's gone. Let's see, what can we interact with out here aside from flowers? When I was a kid, I used to sit on this bench and watch the people go by. But these days, nobody seems to walk the sidewalks. It's because they don't want to be around you, Mike. I'm Fucking not tired. Crazy. What? <laughs> You're not sleeping on the bench. I can never decide whether to think of our front door as an entrance or an exit. God, Mike bringing out the ex existential questions. All right, let's look at the flowers. Mom loves her flowers. Mm-hmm. The flowers are in full bloom. They're in full bloom. All right, let's get out of here. This leads to the center of town. Let's hit the town. There we go. Yep. It's kind of annoying that if you hit the HUD, it, it just makes Mikey Boy stop. Up in this town, I still <laughs> find that a map helps me get to places quickly. A map. <laughs> Five pictures. A lucky rabbit's foot. And is that the ticket for the school dance? I don't know. Make a quick save. Or, I guess I already had a save. I'm just going to save over that. <laughs> Alright, so if you can't tell, you click on the pictures to get around in Dark Seed 2. <laughs> Hank's diner in the pool hall next door played a large part in my teenage years. Okay, so years. Mike did date Rita. I took Rita to the diner on our first date when we were both juniors right, in high school. Around. Um, can get a look at this ad for Ziz, maybe? Funny, no one ever called it Hank's. It was always the diner. <laughs> Hank hated it. 
Let's see. Uh, nope, we can't look at Ziz. Let's see, what does that say? This leads to the center this of town. This leads to the center of town. Hank opened his diner in the early 50s. Those are titties. It hasn't changed one <laughs> bit since then. This font. <laughs> Look at what the pool hall says. I used to hang out in the pool hall with the tough kids once in a while. <laughs> I thought I was cool. I was one of the cool kids at one point. <laughs> All right, let's go into Hanks. <laughs> Whoa! Hanks Diner isn't the swinging place it used to be, but Hanks still does enough business to keep the place going. Ah, yes. Nothing says swinging place like a drab gray diner. None and the business is clearly booming, given that we're the only ones here. I don't here. seem to be as interested in music as I once was. I love that the jukebox doesn't even look destroyed, despite this what Jack said. The man on it looks super happy, though. Rita and I used even to if there is nothing to spend a quarter on, like Mike just said. At one time, these booths were always full of people. Hey Mike, are you gonna stand there? Are you gonna I order anything? To to I've got a business to run talk here. To Hank while I was eating. And I'm sure Hank really appreciates you sitting there to talk with him. No one can make an ice cream soda as good as Hank's. Any flavor you want. Even bacon flavor ice cream. Say Hank, do you think you can get me a cherry ice cream soda? Ugh, forget what I just said. A cherry ice cream soda sounds Sorry, absolutely Mike. disgusting. Sorry Mike, having a problem with the soda dispenser. Darn Sorry Mike, we don't serve potential criminals. On. Hank must be in his 50s now. He opened the diner when he was out of high school. The one entrepreneur this town ever produced. Hey Mike, instead of talking about me in front of my face, why don't you come just talk to me? How's it going, Hank? Oh, you know, hanging low and slightly to the uh, left. My back's been acting up, but otherwise not too bad. How are you, Mike? Starving. What have you got to eat around here? Like I said, I don't serve possible murderers. Like you haven't seen my menu a thousand times. What are you hungry for? Ham and eggs, grits, pancakes? Pancakes? Rita and I used to come here for pancakes after church. Ah, everything leads back to Rita. You two were quite an item back when you were in high school. Shame about what happened to her. Real tragedy. The real tragedy is the service in this place. Come on, Hank, get the lead out. Who do you think murdered Rita? You! Oh, I can't imagine it was anyone from around here. But he's one sick dude, whoever he is. Sick? Murder isn't a disease. It's evil. And I should know. Wait, I said the quiet part Relax, out loud. Mike. It's just a figure of speech. I don't think anyone's going to show the killer any compassion when they catch up with him. Well, let's not go too far, Hank. Have you heard any more about the investigation? Ah, uh, yes. Let's get our lead investigator. Deputy Brown stopped by to get some coffee and donuts on his way to Rita's place. He was saying that the FBI might be called in. Doc Larson was telling us some pretty grisly stuff. I heard about the FBI from the sheriff. Say, Mike, weren't you with Rita the night she was killed? Say, Mike, I'm gonna just throw out subtle hints that I think you're the murderer to your face. Rita was my date to the high school reunion. Shh, don't tell the sheriff. Well, what happened? She got killed in the park near the Ramirez mansion. Didn't Hank, you walk Hank, what is home? this, 20 questions? Just bring me some goddamn pancakes. I can't remember about that night, Hank. It's these headaches. Mike, you and I go way back. I'm the one that sold you the house in California, remember? Not sure why you would sell it, though. Quick. Deputy Brown was saying that the sheriff doesn't want to waste any time on this case. Maybe he can help me with my alibi. I'm seeing Dr. Sims in a short while. Maybe he can jog my memory. Don't waste your money on head shrinkers, Mike. 
Whenever I forget something, I just retrace my steps. <laughs> Whenever I forget if I'm a murderer, I just sit down and have a cold one and relax what did a bit. What Doc Larson have to say? He wouldn't go into any details because he wants to keep certain things from the public. I haven't seen Doc Larson so excited since that other murder. <laughs> Wait, I definitely don't remember committing another murder. What other murder? Old man Ramirez. He died in a fire a few weeks back and left his wife a very rich widow. Funny how Rita died so close to his house. Hank, do you know what a red herring is? No, just wondering. I don't see anything funny about Rita's death. <laughs> well, Hank, looks like you just signed your death warrant. Sorry, Mike. Uh, I forgot that you two were friends. It's just that... See, Mike, I have a bad memory, Ramirez too. Now you know how it feels. Friends. Some folks saw him walking in the park together and holding hands. I don't believe it. <laughs> Sorry, Rita Mike, we really got around. Man. You're right. It's just gossip. Uh, Forget hey, I ever gossip. said anything. Rita was murdered in a public park. How could they keep any details secret? Doc Larson and her body moved to the morgue before dawn. I'm pretty sure that's Deputy not Brown legal. said the sheriff wasn't too happy about that. Didn't give him much of a chance to examine the crime scene first. I lost my appetite. You don't look well, Mike. Why don't you go out for a walk? Nice day for it. <laughs> what I mean is get out of my diner. No pancakes for you. I think I'll just do that, Hank. See you later. Take care, Mike. Right, time to re-engage with Hank. Maybe he has some new leads since I How's stood up. How's it going, up. Hank? Get the fuck out, Mike. Back so soon, Mike? I thought you were going out for a walk. I was, wasn't I? I don't know whether I'm coming or going anymore. <laughs> Mike forgets the basics. You need to take it easy, Mike. Why don't you go visit that carnival in the park? Get your mind I off can imagine these. Mike's inner dialogue saying, Yay, carnival! All right. I can take a hint. See you later, Hank. <laughs> really, Mike? You didn't get the other hints he Take sent care, to you. Mike. All right, one more time. What's new, Hank? Wait, where's the dialogue at? That's weird. All right, I can take a hint. See you later, Hank. All right, let's leave for real this time. Time to go to the pool hall. Whoa! I love this transition. There's Jimmy Gardner and Melissa Fleming. Jimmy's the type of loser I'd expect to Mike, see. Mike, you're place not like one this. to talk. But it's surprising to find the mayor's wife here. Man, Melissa has like five frames of animation there. They always keep a good supply of cue sticks here. It's just a shame that no one else in this entire town plays pool. I was pool. never much of a pool Maybe player. Mike can show us some awesome fencing like skills with the pool place. cue. With the smoke and low lights, it gave me a feeling of solitude that was hard to find somewhere else. <laughs> I'm socially awkward is what I mean to say. Melissa used to be a cheerleader in high school, but since becoming a three-pack-a-day smoker, she isn't as cute anymore. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Hey, remember me? I'm Mike Dawson. It's been a long this time. This is my excited voice. Not long enough to suit me. Damn, Melissa. Can't say I blame you, but still. Hey, why the cold shoulder? What makes you think you're worth giving the cold shoulder to?
So what are you doing here in the pool hall? Seeing Jimmy? Or, I mean as a friend, of course. What are you insinuating? I'm a married woman, I'll have you know. I just came in here for a smoke. While Melissa's arm had five frames of animation, her face only has two. It's kind of like how South Park portrays Canadian people. Well, you did used to date Jimmy back when you were a cheerleader. Man, Mike really does like to live in the past, and I don't ago. think that he gets the people the and things people change. We were in high school, you know? I heard that you married Mayor Fleming. He used to be my dad's partner, you know? Oh, please don't give me that. He's old enough to be my father routine. I've heard it all. Conversation Skills 101. Sound like an idiot and insult the person you're talking to. When did you take up smoking? Don't you know it's bad for your health? And when the first insult didn't have the effect yeah. you want it, double down well, with lots another of things one. things that are bad for your health. <laughs> like you, Mike Dawson. Poor Rita. It's a shame what happened to her. Poor Rita? <laughs> that little trend. Seeing a lot had of hostility towards to Mike her. and Rita. Why all this nasty talk about Rita? And none about me. Ask around, Dawson. Just ask around. Now leave me alone. Never! Hi, Melissa. Have you got time to talk? Man, it's like the last conversation didn't even happen. Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Just how well did you know Rita? Not as well as some other people. Now stop bothering me! Man, she really didn't like Rita. Okay, time to pester Jimmy. Jimmy went to high school with me. He was a straight-A student and football star, but he dropped out and became a loser. We were friends then, but certainly aren't now. This message brought to you in part by colleges around the world. Stay in school, kids. Hi, Jimmy. Long time no see. Well, well, it's Mr. Big Shot Writer. What brings you down to this part of town? Slumming? I'm slumming, all right. How about a game of pool? Mike, Cyber Dreams doesn't have the budget for that. Cut the crap, Dawson. We might have been friends once, but that was a long time I'm ago. I'm having trouble believing Mike ever had friends. That's the unreliable narrator trope for you. What happened to you? You were a straight-A student until you dropped out. I guess I'm just the town's bad seed. You went off to college and joined the establishment. I stayed here and became a statistic. Bad seed, eh? Is this dialogue written by an actual person? We were friends in high school. Why, Why can't so we be friends? Let's just say that you and I don't share the same interests anymore. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I hear that your interests these days aren't exactly on the up and up. So what? There's a lot going on in this town that ain't exactly on the up and up. Wait, is this not a double entendre? You're a real tough guy now, aren't you, Jimmy? Mike's really puffing out his chest for this question. You got that right, chump. I'm the local wise guy, <laughs> so stay out of a my local way. Wise guy. <laughs> what a loser. Tell me, Jimmy, how come the sheriff leaves you alone? That's easy. Why would in this he answer town? Mike when that he just said to leave him alone? That doesn't know his butt from an armadillo, but I got the goods on him. He doesn't bother me. Can I have your goods, Jimmy? What do you know about? Sh I know he's dead. Maybe I should go. Yeah, get out before I throw you out. All right, let's pester him one more time. Listen up, Gardner. I've got some questions to ask you. Oh man, Mike's putting on his big boy pants for this statement. Look, will you get off my back, Dawson? Maybe I should go. Oh, way to wimp out, Mikey boy. Yeah, get out before I throw you out. One more time for fun. Hi, Jimmy. I'd like to talk some more. Yeah? Well, maybe I don't want to talk to you, jerk face. 
Ooh, damn. Maybe I should go. Yeah, get up. All right, let's see what's back here. The mayor campaigned on how he was going to rid our streets of the homeless, but I guess they just got driven into sheds like this. Another evil that's been hidden but still exists. Are you sure this is in Texas and not California? Because Mike isn't gross Some enough, I'm going to make him dig through the trash. To truly understand the culture, you should examine Shut its trash. up. I found an old coat hanger. This might be useful. I once read a story about how a thief used a wire to open a lock. That's a hint that you can pick locks later on. Depending on which locks you try to pick, it can actually lead to an this instant death. This coat hanger is rusty and bent. Nothing good ever seems to last. Like computer adventure games. All this stuff and there's nothing to really interact with. Sad. It's hard to believe that someone could live in this dilapidated old shed. But it beats my old house and my mom breathing down my neck. Time to move my stuff in. This is the most bizarre collection of junk I've ever seen. You literally have a magnet, camera, and rusty coat hanger in that Some jacket kind of, of yours. You have no room to talk. I'm not sure what's in it, but it smells good. Roadkill stew! Uh, nothing really click on this. This is here. the most bizarre collection. I shouldn't take someone else's supper. Besides, I don't have much of an appetite these days. You literally tried to order food at Hanks. There's nothing here I can use. Bummer. Alright, time to head out. I'm going to try and break up these videos as best I can. So I'm going to end part one once I get back to the Polaroid map. Stay tuned for part two, and as always, thanks for watching. Hi, Jimmy. I'd like to talk some more. Yeah? Well, maybe I don't want to talk to you, jerk face. Maybe I should go. Yeah.